1967, I kind of exhausted living at Noosa and riding point breaks. But I've been watching George Greeno every winter for three years. You know, carving from the bottom, hit the top, running on the shoulder, doing roundhouse cutbacks, hitting the lip on his knees, on his kneeboard. And when I first saw it, I went, I've got to do that standing up. So I came back to Sydney. I was parked in traffic at Monovale and there was a boat on the roof of the car and the boat's got a V bottom. And I'm going, wide boards, couldn't bank them. What if I put a V in one? So I went into that day, grabbed a blank, shaped a V in the tail, conk over the nose. And then I took it home that night in the back of my little car, a little wagon, to Paul Witzig's house at Palm Beach where I was staying. Paul called out, well, what's that? Looks like a plastic machine. And so the name stuck. There was a real need to make a board that went vertical. You know, I'd been to Hawaii, stowed away to Hawaii in 63, and they'd paddle into, into waves and just stand like statues gliding across Sunset Beach. But, but seeing George in 64 was the contrast. He's the guy using the vertical face. So in that sense, George inspired the shortboard revolution because his surfing was so advanced on his knees and we needed to use the, that, that element of the wave. So 67 was the start of it. So this mongrel standing next to me, Dr. Nick Bitko, hard surfing mongrel from Grady and the rest of the East Coast of Australia and around the planet. Nick rocks in, he's been coming here a fair bit chatting with myself again, but he rocked in one day and he started talking about, let's do a V-bottom. What was on your mind when you rocked in, mate, when you said, let's do an old V? Well, I wanted to know how to shape a, a big plastic, because I had an original one and I I just wanted any tips and it, it just, it was just a surprise to me that you were still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> the first uh, successful seven foot six, which was way too big, but the rocker was right, it was a freak rocker. And Nick wrote it and he came in and said to me, Bob, I want to be able to cut down. I want to be able to drive down hard. Got to go shorter. We, we, we started at what? You had a 7.6. You gave me your eight footer, which is- The eight footer. The, the good rocker. The good rocker. And then I was trying to coax you down. I was trying to coax you down to this and you made the 6.4. I to shoot something with Elliot in the water and the waves weren't good and we just got, I remember we got that, that one turn, that, that the feeling that I was chasing, you know, that we talked about, which was the flex of the stringless, the load of the fin and the down carb, and it happened on the 6.4. There was that one. And it's just a, oh, nothing, it's just a bit of a cutty. And like all of them, the we were trying to make the most high performance board that ever was made. We were trying to make, uh, a feeling happened. A feeling. Yeah, so I felt it. I felt the bend, I felt the flex in here, I felt the fin load up because we'd foiled that fin. Yeah. You know, green OS with the twisty bit. I was calling it swoop. Yeah. The first time I rode a plastic machine, the original eight footed back in the 1967, I paddled out at South Avalon one morning and I was like 10 o'clock and I stayed out until 6 o'clock that night. I surfed eight hours straight because for the sensation of the V bottom and, and the sweepy drive that I got I'd never felt ever in my life when I was at the peak of my surfing. So I had this thing in the back of my head, this swooping feeling. And there's Nick in that little clip and it's off the bottom but he's, you know, he's like a carved down from the top and around the soup and off the light water. It was the same sensation he was feeling that I felt back in 1967. Yeah. Five eight by 20, 19 and three quarters is Nick's go-to now. 
and it's a goer. The thing takes off. The first HP single thing for 40 years.